to say I'm a trade unionist. My the reason I got into political activism is because I'm a uh, I was an engineer on building sites and I was a union safety rep uh, for my trade union. Um, and of course, like many trade unionists, I've realised that being a trade union activist sometimes affects your career prospects. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, whenever we talked as trade unionists about blacklisting in the past, people often accused us of being conspiracy theorists, and that's completely out of nonsense, that sort of thing doesn't happen. Uh, except that in 2009, the Information Commissioner's Office did a raid <coughs> on an organisation in the Midlands called the Consultant Association, and they found secret files that uh, the construction companies have been keeping on 3,200 uh, workers in the construction industry. Um, the companies involved are not small fly by night uh, cowboy builders, they're the biggest multinational companies uh, in, in the UK. It's Sabrina <coughs> Calpine, it's Skanska, it's Balfour B, it's, it's Carillion, it's Costains, all the people who built the Olympics, all the people who built all the big public sector stuff, and all the people who are now privatising huge swathes of the National Health Service. Mm -hmm. um, the um, because it's a government department that did the raid, you can now, if you think you're on this list, apply and get a copy of your own file. Um, so I've got uh, a copy of my file. It's 36 pages long. It's got my name, address, national insurance number, photographs, the registration of the car I drive, my home number, my mobile number. Um, when I was elected as a union safety rep, um, my credentials that are sent to the company in order to give us some uh, legal protection and legal rights. That was photocopied with the office stamp still on it and sent up and added to my list. So just for being a union safety rep was enough to get you blacklisted. Um, it's got information about my brother, um, who's not a trade unionist. It's got information about my wife. Um, every time I raise concerns about unpaid wages or uh, toilets overflowing or asbestos on a building site, what would happen is the manager on the building site would send that information up to the head office um, and the director of human resources in most cases would be the person who's actually the main contact between the, uh, the big companies and uh, this consultant association. Um, and as well as that, they used to have meetings uh, about once every three months and he was only allowed to attend the meetings if he was at director level of, 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 the, uh, of, the, of the company. Um, so we've got directors of multinational companies involved in this uh, and when you see the files um, it looks as if uh, the information is coming from, you know, and if you listen to the companies it's as if all of the information has come from the managers and building sites and the directors of these companies. But the trouble is as more and more of the files got released uh, over, the, over a period of time it became obvious that some of the people on the list and some of the information on the files had nothing to do with a manager on a building site. One of, my, uh, one of my friends, Dan Gilman, who was uh, an anti-racist campaigner uh, for, for many years, um, he's on the construction industry blacklist. He's a teacher. Yeah. The only information on his blacklist file is about him participating. He actually, what he actually says is, was observed participating in an anti-BMP protest at the Senate you know? So. Now, you explain to me how a manager on the building site just happens to be walking past the cenotaph, happens to notice Dan Gilman, who's a teacher, and then happens to pass that information on to this secret uh, blacklisting organisation. So, Dan Gilman's file and other files, and as more and more of them were released, it became obvious that some of the information hadn't just come from the managers on building sites, it had come from the police. So, um, the, there's a campaign, there's a justice campaign on blacklisting that's been up and running uh, called the Blacklist Support Group. And the Blacklist Support Group put in a complaint to the uh, in, uh, Independent Police Complaints Commission complaining about um, uh, possible police collusion in blacklisting. And from the beginning, police have denied it and the companies have denied it. Yeah, at my employment tribunal uh, in 2012, the head of uh, investigations for the Commissioner's Office, his name is David Clancy, before becoming the Head of Investigations for the ICO, he was a police officer for Metropolitan Police for eight years. In my employment tribunal, um, he said under oath, there's some information on the blacklist files that could only have been supplied by the police or security services. 
So, you know, the information is said now and out now. We've got any complaints to the IPCC. Um, uh, originally, we asked for a public inquiry, but Theresa May and David Cameron both said there's not enough uh, evidence to justify this, and you had to go to the IPCC. Within weeks, the IPCC had sent back a letter to our lawyers saying uh, that their initial investigations demonstrated that every special branch in the country were routinely supplied information about prospective employers. Every special branch uh, in the country. Um, now, because of uh, the revelations about uh, Peter Francis and, and really in, in Rob's book, which I can't praise enough, if anyone wants to know this stuff, go and read Rob's book uh, undercover. Um, uh, Theresa May has set up, uh, uh, or the police have set up an investigation called Operation Hearn, looking into the role of undercover uh, policing. And in the first report that Operation Hearn produced, um, it said that the police involvement in blacklisting uh, didn't happen. It was completely untrue. There's no evidence to demonstrate this at all. If there was any links between the companies and the police, it was uh, the information went purely from the companies to the police, and it was done because of a sense of civic duty. Yeah. Uh, was the actual quote in the, uh, uh, in, the, in, in, the in the report. Um, now, fortunately, we, we can take it out, so we've done a bit of digging, uh, and Pete Francis, the whistleblower from the Special Demonstration Squad, we've now uh, managed to show him the, the blacklist files that we think uh, potentially may have come from uh, uh, undercover police. Uh, showed him Dan Gilman's file, the teacher that I spoke about. I showed him, uh, or I didn't show him, but he brought this part of the, the man responsible for this. Showed him Frank Smith's file. Frank Smith was a uh, bricklayer from Liverpool. Um, and on his blacklist file, it actually says, as well as the stuff uh, to do with uh, being a trade union activist uh, and being on, on picket lines, it actually says, one of the, the comments says, he's under watch constantly, uh, he's under official watch constantly, and he's considered to be politically dangerous. Yeah. When Pete Francis saw Frank Smith's blacklist file, Pete Francis said, I personally opened the special branch file on Frank Smith. And that is the kind of information that would have been on Frank Smith's special branch file. Um, Frank Smith's uh, partner at the time, Lisa, who was a white American middle class woman over here working for an um, anti-racism group that Pete Francis had uh, infiltrated. Um, Lisa has also got a blacklist file. Um, the only thing it says on it is that she's the girlfriend of Frank Smith. Now, once again, you tell me how a manager on a building site would know anything about that. It's clearly come from the police. Actually, we clearly know that undercover police officers, Pete Francis being one of them, has spied on these people, They've put the information on the Special Branch database, and then there was a section within Special Branch called the uh, uh, Industrial Section within Special Branch, and their entire purpose is to supply information to uh, big business. That's the reason I was set up. There's an equivalent section within MI5 uh, that does the same thing, that spies on uh, trade unionists and supplies information to uh, big business. During the minor strikes, Dale Rimington was in charge of uh, the section within, uh, uh, spe uh, within uh, uh, MI5. And, and if they were the only, if they were, if they were the only two, we'd think, well, perhaps it's just a one-off. Uh, but no, um, Mark Jenner, an undercover police officer who was uh, deployed into North London in the late 1990s. His cover story was that he was a police... Uh, uh, his cover story was a police officer. <laughs> 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 it's a very good cover story. Uh, uh, his cover story was that he was a builder. Um, and because he was a builder, he used to turn up on our picket lines. Not only did he turn up on our picket lines, he attended our meetings. Not only did he attend our meetings, Sometimes he chaired our meetings <laughs> that, that were taking place. Um, when, when, he, uh, uh, when he left, uh, once again we suddenly, you know, we did a bit of digging, and uh, Mark Jenner is also another one of these police officers who had a long-term relationship with one of the women activists who was spying on, uh, a woman called Alison. Uh, and when, the, when he left, when they, he left some of the documents left around in, in, the, in the house when he left, including uh, one of his diaries. Mm -hmm. And we've gone through his diaries, 
Um, and in the diaries, it's page after page of attending trade union meetings. The man was in there spying on trade unionists. Uh, Alison said when he used to come back from trade union meetings with loads and loads of notes, he used to give the notes to Alison's mum, who typed them up for him. Um, uh, people, um, he was also spying on a group called the uh, Colin Roach Centre in, uh, in Stoke Newington. If everyone, if anyone from this area knows the Colin Roach Centre uh, in Hackney, uh, which is uh, you know, a justice campaign, but also a trade union resource centre. Uh, uh, during the time of the peace process in Northern Ireland, uh, the Colin Roach Centre did a a, uh, a delegation of trade unions to, to visit Northern Ireland, look at the police process. Um, and one of the trade unions who went over there was Steve Headley, who's now the Assistant General Secretary of the RMT, and Mark Jenner stayed at Steve Headley's mum's house um, when, when they went over there. These people were spying on trade unionists time and time again. Last week in Parliament, John McDonnell MP named uh, because all the way through the police have said they've had nothing to do with it, they're never actually involved, and all of this is purely speculative, and what we're doing is joining the dots, you know. Last week in Parliament, John Don named Detective Chief Inspector Gordon Mills as a police officer from another undercover police unit that spied on act domestic extremists called the National Extremism Tactical Coordination Unit, NETCO. He actually attended the blacklisting meetings these secret meetings that only directors of these multinational companies attended. He actually attended the meetings and gave PowerPoint presentations. John McDonnell was now named him, named the other directors of companies who were at the meeting, said where the venue was, what the date was, and still they refused to admit that the police were involved in it. Um, what we're asking for is a public inquiry. Tra you know, blacklist and trade unions is no longer an industrial relations issue. It's part and parcel of the you know, the whole human rights conspiracy between big business and the state spying on democratic organisations, democratic campaigns such as trade unions, which should be fully allowed in a free and democratic society. Um, we're asking for a full public inquiry and that the victims of undercover spying should be part of the remit drawing up. The victims of child abuse are going to be part of the, the remit to draw up the remit for child abuse. The victims for Hillsborough were part of the remit for drawing up this, and we think people like Helen Steele, uh, people like uh, Jenny and, and Blacklisty Trade Unionist and the Lawrence family, they should be part of the remit drawing up what the public inquiry is about. So it's wide enough to hoover up the entire conspiracy rather than just a narrow little bit. And why don't they want us to have this uh, inquiry? I tell you why. Because the head, because the links between big business and the state stink. They try and suggest it's one off bad apples. I'll tell you what, what it isn't, is it isn't like Leveson with phone hacking. Because Leveson with phone hacking, there were 3,000 uh, celebrities whose phones were hacked uh, by uh, a multinational media company with links with the police. If you believe the truth in it, the, uh, believe the story, with Leveson, the, uh, the information from the police came from individually corrupt police officers who were actually paid £10,000 for the information. If a, direct, if a detective chief inspector comes and gives a PowerPoint presentation at an undercover meeting, uh, that is not a rogue officer or one or two bad apples. That is standard operating procedure between the secret state uh, and, and big business. And the head of British police spying between 2004 and 2010, who was in charge of the Special Demonstration Squad, NETCO, and all of these other multitude of acronyms uh, that uh, are there for, for undercover police units who spied on police. His name is uh, uh, Assistant Chief Constable Anton Setchell. Um, he was the top, uh, he was basically the UK police spy chief who spied on all of us. Um, where is he working now after he left in 2010? Mm. He's now the head of security for Lamo Rocks, mm. one of the main blacklisted multinational building firms. Mm. You know, mm. This is an absolute rotten barrel. Mm. We want the full inquiry exposed. You know, uh, but actually, as Helen said, the fact that they're spying on us demonstrates we're doing something right. We shouldn't stop our campaigning, we should up our campaigning to expose it and carry on fighting for justice. Thank you very much.